Natalie. Welcome to the Yorkshire Museum. Come and take a look inside with me. On the 9th of July 1212, King John granted the City of York a charter. This charter gave the city certain privileges, including allowing the people of York to collect their own taxes, to hold their own courts and to appoint a mayor. The Charter put in place a form of government that still persists today and this year the City of York is celebrating 800 years of this fantastic history. The Yorkshire Museum's new exhibition 1212 The Making of the City has been developed in line with a city-wide celebration celebrating 800 years of York's history. Unfortunately the original charter no longer survives but the Yorkshire Museum has one really special object that really embodies what the York 800 celebrations are all about. This really small, unassuming tax collector's seal belonged to a guy called Snaris. You can see his name written at the bottom. And if you look really closely, you can see his coins falling into his purse. Since collecting their own taxes was one of the big things that people were allowed to do because of the charter, this object really embodies what this exhibition and what the city celebration is all about. What's really exciting about our new exhibition is that we've managed to pull together all the finest medieval treasures from across the city and put them under one roof to tell the story of York in one place for the first time. We've got a real variety of objects, archaeology, paintings, original manuscripts and even textiles from the medieval period. The objects have been loaned to us from across the city from institutions like York Minster, the Merchant Adventurers Hall, York Mansion House, the City of York Council and York Archaeological Trust. The exhibition is split into three main sections, one of which deals with religion. Religion was ubiquitous in the medieval world, it was everywhere. York was no exception. Some 46 parish churches as well as eight monasteries and York Minster and St Mary's Abbey dominated the city skyline. St Mary's Abbey was the richest and most powerful in the north of England. When the Yorkshire Museum was built, it was plonked right on top of the ruins, making for a really atmospheric medieval gallery. The ruins of the archway, the entrance to the Abbey's chapter house, have been flooded with colour and light for the exhibition to show just how artistic, vibrant and colourful the medieval world would have been. Unlike St Mary's Abbey, which was destroyed as part of the Reformation, York Minster still dominates the city skyline. Found in the tombs of archbishops are a wealth of fantastic, amazing objects. Sapphires, gold, silver jewellery, ivory from across the world. These show just how important, how wealthy and how powerful the archbishops who ruled medieval York really were. York has always enjoyed a close relationship with the monarchy. The castle at York was built by William the Conqueror in the 11th century and Clifford's Tower still survives in the city today. Some of the Yorkshire Museum's most iconic objects are thought to have royal connections. For example, the Midland Jewel is thought to be connected with Richard III and the Midland Ring with King Henry IV. Successive royals have visited York over the years, from Edward III to Richard III to Henry VIII. Many kings came here in the medieval period and York's still a popular place with the royal family today. Queen Elizabeth herself actually opened this new exhibition for us. It was a very exciting day. It would be impossible to do an exhibition about medieval York without looking at the people who lived, worked and died in the city. York's guilds played a massive role in the development of the city and they made everything from buildings and windows down to ordinary objects like boxes, bowls, cups and saucers. This leather box is my favourite object from the museum's collections. It was painstakingly made over a really long period. It's decorated with dogs and stags and it still has traces of its original red paint surviving. When York's guilds weren't busy making things, they were spending their hard-earned money. York's merchant adventurers, one of the most successful guilds in the city, have left lists counting out how much money they spent on their annual feasts and fairs. They really liked to party. York's guilds were also responsible for charity and for instructing religion in the city. York's mystery plays were a huge part of the medieval city life and the guilds played a big part in producing them. 
the mystery plays are going to return to York this year as part of our York 800 celebrations. They're going to be staged just outside the museum in the ruins of St Mary's Abbey. So, you've had a sneaky peek into our new exhibition. If that's whet your appetite and you want to find out more about 800 years of York's fantastic history, then come down and join us at the Yorkshire Museum today. Bye for now.